Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Kristen and today we are doing a story time. <laughs> um, you're probably wondering why I'm so happy in this video because of the title. I'm, I'm not really sure what I'm going to title it yet, but um, yes, my husband almost died last week and I'm just, right now I am just so thankful that he's alive. Like that's, I am so thankful to God and just that's where I'm at right now um, my life is a chaotic mess I'm a mess um, <laughs> but I'm happy um, that he's alive so um, I just want to kind of fill you guys in on what's going on I kind of have some pre-filmed videos that I filmed before all of this so I just wanted to explain what's going on so you're not like confused because I did like a day in the life uh, when Chris had his first surgery. So anyway, let's jump right into the story. I don't have any notes, so hopefully I'll do a good job explaining everything that's been going on. So Chris, my husband, has had a bad back for about a year and a half, and it's just been getting, just progressively getting worse and worse and worse. It finally got to a point where they did another MRI and um, they were able to do surgery and try to fix what was going on in his back. Because he's so young, they really didn't want to do surgery when this all first started last year because I, when you have a bad back, surgery is kind of something that you have to keep like having done. Um, but his back got so bad that he was losing um, feeling in his legs and in his toes. He wasn't able to bend his toes back. His disc had came dislodged completely and was pinched in between some nerves so they had to get in there they had to fix it and that's what we did so august 19th chris had surgery everything went well he couldn't find the disc <laughs> that was the only thing that was you know kind of funny about everything but he um he was able to fix everything in there um for the most part he was recovering well his mobility was great he was doing better than he was before the surgery um, he was very sore and he had to move slow and be very careful he couldn't bend over but he was doing great so almost two weeks later um, he woke up on it was Saturday it was Labor Day weekend and he was like I just my back doesn't feel right it hurts it's really achy it just doesn't feel right and he was saying that all throughout the day he was getting real agitated um, so I was just, I didn't know what was going on. He wasn't sick. He wasn't, he didn't have a fever. Like it was just all back related issues. So by 10 o'clock at night, um, he could hardly move. He was just like really, really struggling. So I was like, all right. Um, it was Saturday night. The next day was Sunday. So I was like, let's just, maybe we'll have to take you to the ER, um, in the morning or something, or call your doctor, try to figure it out. So in the middle of the night, he tried to get up to go to the bathroom and he couldn't move and like he was just laying on his side couldn't move couldn't roll over couldn't do anything and i'm like all right i'm calling 911 and he's like no he's like no 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 i don't want to freak out the kids but he's like in agony saying this to me and i'm just like um kind of pacing back and forth and i'm looking at him and i'm evaluating the situation i was like Babe, I'm calling 911. I said, I know you don't want me to, but like you're, you need to go to the hospital. Something's not right. I don't know what is not right, but you can't move, so you need to go to the hospital. So I call 911. That was a motorcycle. I was like, what was that? Um, I call 911 and they come get him, and he's just in agony. Um, we have a lot of steps, and he, they couldn't roll him down. They had, he had to walk down the stairs. So he had two big guys helping him down the steps and he was just he was in so much agony like he was crying and Chris does not cry like he's just not I know some people are more emotional and they cry and that's not him you know so I just knew he was in so much pain so the next day we get to the ho or then in the morning I get to talk to the doctor um, and one of the ER doctors rounds and she's like um, he had a fever um, that indicates that there's infection. So um, at that point I had all my kids in the hospital room and my aunt was driving up. So I was like, all right, they 
said that they were going to admit him to the upstairs. So at that point I was like, all right, I'm going to get the kids home because they were just agitating him because they were in a little room and it was crazy. So I was like, I'm going to get the kids home and I'll come back when my aunt comes. Well, by the time I get home, he calls me and says they're going to release him from the hospital. So I'm freaking out. Um, I'm trying to call his surgeon. I didn't know who was trying to release him. I assumed it was the ER um, and it was just crazy. So long story short, his they did an MRI on his back and it didn't indicate any infection. So his, um, the surgery team, the neurologists, were trying to release him from the hospital. Meanwhile, he's screaming in agony and pain, like his pain is getting worse and worse and worse and they're giving him medication and none of it's even touching. So I finally get that figured out. The ER doctor was not going to release him. He came, I went back to the hospital and he's talking to me and he's like, um, He's like, I'm pretty sure there's an infection in his back. I, um, I haven't been able to pinpoint it. We're drawing, um, we're do, they're doing like all kinds of tests. They took his blood from his arm. They took urine tests. They were just doing all kinds of tests to try to narrow and figure out what was going on. So this is Labor Day weekend. Everything's slow because not everybody's at work. Um, there's this nurse that like she probably saved his life she was she was watching him on screen the whole time like watching his vitals and stuff so when they're getting ready to admit him to the upstairs she comes down and she's like following him and she's talking to me and she's like i'm telling you there's an infection in his back call if they don't do it for you you need to make sure you get infectious disease it's this infectious disease doctor um she's like you need to get him to evaluate him and um like insist that that gets done so the next day um he comes in and he's like telling us that he feels pretty positive that there's an infection in his back they haven't they hadn't at this point been able to pinpoint it because they have to like phys they have to go in and draw blood from it and they hadn't done that the uh, the surgeon that originally did the surgery is the only person that could go in and do that so he put a call out to him and requests that he just does surgery on him and cleans out the wound. Um, the surgeon, we talked to him and he was just, he did not believe that there was infection in his wound. Um, at this point he hadn't looked at it, <laughs> but he was just, because of the strand of blood, um, of infection that they found in his blood. So he was in sepsis. If you don't know what sepsis is, it's when you have an infection and it gets into your bloodstream and a lot, most people like die from this. It's like so incredibly serious. So, um, he did not believe that there was infection in there. The infectious disease doctor told me that he was gonna be like that because that's their work and to tell them that it's infected is like an insult to them basically. Um, which, you know, I understand, I get, but hey, let's figure this out. I don't really care at this point. <laughs> so he, so at this point, um, he doesn't believe there's infection in there and he hadn't even looked at it yet. So he wanted to draw blood from it and just find out. So when he rolled Chris over to see his back, he just canceled. He was going to do like this procedure where they put a needle into it and they draw blood from it. He just immediately canceled that and prepped the OR and Chris had to go back into surgery. And basically they had to open him back up, flush everything out, um, pour antibiotic um, into the wound and clean it out that way. They had to like, cut off the sides of his incision and then he sutured it back up. So it's just been really crazy. Um, Chris cannot walk. Um, he, ha he, walk he walks with a walker, I'll say it like that. Um, he can't sit straight, like he can't, like he can't sit like I am it, without excruciating pain. So they have sent him to a rehabilitation hospital where they're monitoring or they're giving him and um, managing his pain and teaching him how to walk, how to shower, how to, um, today he had to go into like an apartment, like looking room and he had to cook um, for himself and like get things out of the fridge. So they're teaching him how to do the basics without bending, twisting, 
um, or lifting. So it's very frustrating for him and I because we don't understand why he isn't able to do basic things um, and why he's still in so much pain. My best guess is just that he this infection was so bad and it's still in his blood so the antibiotics are still trying to kill this infection. He has a pick line um, which is like an IV that goes to his heart and he'll have like very strong antibiotics for about six weeks. So I don't know when he'll be home. Um, I don't know, like I don't know, nobody can really tell me like like why he's so bad because after the first surgery he could walk and it wasn't the second surgery that made him so bad it was the infection because when he went into the hospital for the infection he just had to lay straight like this like he literally couldn't move without being in excruciating pain so we have a long journey in front of us I am um, trying to get through it the best that I can it's very difficult for us because um, he hasn't been able to work in a long time and you know that's hard and every time we think that things are getting better or like this is it we're gonna you know your back's gonna be better or okay you know what I mean like it's just another hit like something else happens so we've been through a lot and we're trying to get through the best we can um, but I want to tell I wanted to tell you guys because I hopped on my YouTube community community tab so quick when I read what sepsis was because I was like I literally was sitting next to him and I thought that he was gonna die I was really scared and I know that so many of you have prayed for us and um, just in the past before all this happened so I knew I was like I've got 4,000 people if I can reach them and they'll say a prayer for him like I'm all about it you know so um, I just want to thank you guys for your support. I am trying to get back into um, like editing. I have videos that, like so many videos that need to be edited that were before this. And um, like our little world here, we're trying to get used to a new normal. Um, my mom is here, She's wor she works from home, so she's working um, so she can help me at night a little bit like with the kids and stuff so I can go see him. And my father-in-law is here, um, but he's very limited in what he can do. So, because he has, um, he has some health issues too. So, we're just, we're doing the best we can. Um, I know that God has a plan for us, and He has a plan for Chris. And I know that He's going to get him through this. And, um, you know, we just got to get through this hump. But I just want to thank all of you for all of your love and support, and just continue to pray for us. And, um, you know, you guys mean so much to me and I'm so thankful for all of you. And I really appreciate everybody that commented and just prayed with me because that is what I needed in that moment. And I felt the prayers, like I felt it that day. He was in so much pain and up until that point, they couldn't manage his pain at all. And when I, not long after I put that comment out there, um, like they started managing his pain better. Um, so I just... I'm so thankful, like so thankful. You guys have no idea. But um, yes, I do have videos coming out. Might be a little slow. <laughs> I know you guys, you know, are totally um, supportive and patient with me and I appreciate that. So um, if you guys have any questions, and um, like definitely ask me below. I'm not sure if I touched on everything. I'm sure I didn't, but um, definitely ask me in the comments below I'll be happy to answer them or I'll make another video later I'm trying to vlog his recovery because I want him to see um, how far he's coming because his improvements may it be small their improvements you know what I mean so it's important that he sees that because it's you know if you can't walk or you're walking with a walker and you can't sit like it can be very frustrating and mentally I think it's very hard for him so I want him to see where he was and ha where he's going if that makes sense so um, yeah stay tuned for that and I love you guys and thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one and keep 
praying for us. <laughs> I will always accept prayers. So I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. If we fail